What's up guys? What's going on? So I want to do a video on Black Loon Lilith. So let's roll the intro and get into it. All right, welcome everyone. So I need to get my notes out to write these timestamps, but very quickly, um, you know, what is Black Moon Lilith, right? Um, so Black Moon Lilith is not a planet. It is a calculation, so it's a hypothetical point based on the apogee of the moon. So, you know, at the time of your birth, essentially where the moon is furthest from, on, in its orbit is furthest from you, essentially, right? So, um, obviously, with that said, you know, it isn't as important as a planet, but it's still very important. And the way I've seen it lately, it's been carrying a lot of weight in a lot of the charts I've done lately. Um, especially, I've seen a lot of conjunctions with the moon um, or hard aspects to the moon. So, yeah, I mean, it's been, it can definitely do a lot. And even with the sign, it says a lot because it, it really tells us you know, what, what by our little sign, uh, obviously the house matters too, right? But we're doing signs in this video, um, where we have this kind of like where our dark energy is, like where we all have um, an ability to vibrate at our highest and our lowest. So I always look at Black Moon Lilith as like, you know, by sign, by house, this is, this is where we have the potential to, you know, when we get in those moods, when, when we get in those lower vibrational versions of ourselves, um, we can be very much in our Lilith energy, right? So, um, so it can, it's very psychological. It has a kind of a Scorpio hue to it. And, um, you know, there's a lot of issues that might go unnoticed that it can, it can speak about. It can show us um, a lot about. So, um, yeah. Um, so let's see what else can I say about it? Yeah. Some, some could say it's our shadow self. Um, and you know, basically I also see it as the archetype of the woman who, you know, doesn't put up with BS. Um, but also, you know, when we look at just the, um, I'm not going to go into to, to all of the um, mythological background, but what it shows is that it is, you know, linked to this very free feminine self, right? Um, the part that's repressed by the patriarchal society, right? So it's very much about, it's a, it's a feminine energy. Um, it's very much about independence um, and standing up for yourself, there's a sexual hue to it as well. Um, but then like on, you know, so, so really like if we look at the little sign, it's like we, we can follow this and um, sort of grow towards like kind of get, get away from the lower, more destructive side of it, right? But it can be, yeah, where we're, where we're very self-sabotaging, um, where we might be manipulative, and there's, yeah, there's a lot, like I said, it's very Scorpion. There's a lot of associations with secrets, the occult, um, trauma, shame, et cetera, right? Um, so it takes eight years, I think eight to ten, eight to nine years, somewhere in that range. I think it's closer to nine for Lilith to make a circle through the whole zodiac. So... It's around like, I think nine, I think it's nine months. It stays in one sign for nine months. And it looks like, how do I describe the, 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 the glyph in a chart? It's kind of like a, what's it called? It's like a, a crescent moon shape, but then like a cross. I don't know. Maybe we'll put, put a um, uh, image. But anyways, so... Let's start with Aries, the first sign. Let's do it like that. And um, let me just write down. So Black Moon Lilith and Aries, to me, I've noticed how that can come off um, 
That can come off by someone who just can be very, very explosive, right? Um, almost like a overly fiery, overly competitive energy. Um, so I've seen it in people who they love, you know, they're, like I said, very, very competitive. They love to win. Very strong sexual energy too. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would say just that impulsivity of Aries can be their kind of how they how, how they're self undoing, I guess, how they can self sabotage. Um, and it can also be very like childish, like where it's like they hate to be, you know, hate being told what to do. Um, and as Aries can be in the shadow of Aries, anger issues, right? So it can, it can be, you know, around problems expressing anger in a healthy way. So, um, yeah, there can be that, 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 that feeling that they always need to rebel and this can be, diff yeah, it can be difficult to um, kind of work with people who have this at times, right? <clears throat> Obviously, you have to look at how it works in the whole, tra the whole chart. So, um, yeah, so I would say that because it's, it's, it's under the influence of Mars, um, it's just about learning how to work with it. It can be, so even like if, if so females who have this, they might come off um, in a masculine way in times, right? Um, and it can just vary, like I said, it can be, it can lead to a lot of charisma a lot of ambition and all that, but when it's too much, it can, especially when it's accompanied by a chart that has a lot of fire as well, it can be difficult. Um, and especially because it is so governed by those instincts, by those Martian instincts, um, and that passion, right? So there needs to be an outlet for this energy. So yeah. Um, and I think, I think one thing I've seen a lot, yeah, so the, like people I've seen with this, they need to work on their anger and a lot of times it can result in relationship issues um, where they can see their partner as almost someone that they need to conquer or something like that, right? Um, and always be opposed to them. So, so yeah. Um, Leo. So let's jump into Leo. Let me write down too. Um, so Leo is, Black Moon Lilith and Leo is a little different. We're just going to do the fire signs first. Um, I would say that that one I've seen as the potential to be a little bit, um, like there's potential to be a bit narcissistic, um, not narcissist, but narcissistic. And um, a lot of times they, they do have painful experiences when it comes to that Leo, which is like inner child energy growing up. Um, maybe not feeling kind of like a fifth house Saturn in, in, a, in a way, right? Where it's like not feeling like it's safe to enjoy yourself and express that, you know, who you really, really are. So it can create the defense mechanism, which is a very strong ego. Um, and there's a real, you know, so in this one, there's, a, there's that need to really like come to terms with who you are. Um, and any fire sign, Lilith placement, right? It, it's gonna, there, can, there can be some external overcompensation. So yeah, it can come off definitely selfish, definitely arrogant. Um, and whatnot. Now, um, I, I would say with this one too, there can be grandiosity and there can be a sense that if I don't accomplish this, I'm not worthy, right? And um, I think that, you know, when we look at this placement also, damn, I mean, like in my experience, I've seen it, I've seen Leo, like the son, the father, like the father, a lot, a lot, I've, I've noticed a lot with the father, you know, being like, like some darkness there in a lot of charts, but I don't know, maybe that's not, maybe that's not um, a trend for everyone. Um, but yeah, so I would say self-confidence, you know, and, and, and a lot of times, like I've seen with people who are 
you know, maybe they're showing this external self-confidence, but just overdoing it. And really it's like, is it really there? So also, yeah, like Leo, you know, you just have to think of the shadow of the sign. It can be addicted to drama. It can be addicted to, to, to having, you know, being the center of attention and, and, and everyone listen to me, everyone talk to me. So, um, yeah, but then there can also be, you know, a lot of elegance, a lot of sex, sex appeal that comes to this, a lot of pop, you know, it can, it can, de it can definitely, like I said, it's not always, like, it's not, it's not going to ruin you, your Lilith, necessarily. Um, but, yeah, definitely they want to be adored, for sure. Um, I would say that, yeah, Leo is son so there can be like a wounding of the masculine in some way so yeah you could, you could think of like father issues or you could think of whatever you want you know just just that son energy you know having some wounding around around the ego or the sense of self and yeah a lot of times with leo there can be that obsession with with status um, i need to show you know i need to show everyone how great i am so yeah interesting to hear what Everyone has to say about that. Okay. So, Sag, so we'll do 11, 13. So, Sagittarius, um, Sagittarius Lilith, whew, last fire sign. Um, I would say that, hmm. So they can be very adventurous people, but they can be quite restricted. And also when it comes to Sagittarius being about truth, I've seen this with people who might blurt out their truth and want to push their truth on and never be, never accept being wrong, right? Um, so a lot of times they come from a background where, where they were taught that a certain set of rules or way of seeing the world was, was the correct way, a certain truth you could say. Um, and a lot of times they, yeah, they, they do have that strong desire to kind of create their own path in that respect, but they can go to, you know, it's Jupiter ruled, so very massive extremes in doing so, right? Um, so, yeah, um, I would say also, you know, because Sagittarius is about expansion, adventure, and like I said, truth, what, you know, what is, what is my, my truth that I'm, th I'm then going to apply to my whole life, right? Um, there is that desire to understand, right? There is that, des that desire to, um, to kind of have a lot of experiences, right? But um, there is a need, in my experience, for self-reflection, right? Because... Um, and life will force that on the, onto them often, right? And like the other fire signs, there is that desire also to be extraordinary, to be great, um, and um, you know, to get to Jupiter, to get to the top, to expand, you know, to, to 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 do all these things. But I think a lot of it also, in my experience, is people can struggle with the conception of of truth and, and of, of 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 faith ultimately, right? Um, you know, a lot, like I've seen like one trend where like they come from a family, like I said before, but you know, where, where at least one of the parents has like a very strong opinion of like what the universal truth is. It could even be political, right? But like a lot of times it is, you know, religious or, 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 you know, so it's difficult for that person to, um, you know, to, to move around. And I've also seen how this placement can indicate two parents that had very, very different views. So it's a little bit confusing. Um, maybe like, you know, born like Sagittarius in different countries or cultures within the same country or different social, so, you know, social backgrounds, socioeconomic, whatever. But yeah, like either way, just having like different philosophies. So it can, you can imagine, like I can think of like a few clients and friends who have this where it's like, you know, like that is difficult in your unconscious when you have, and it's the same, same thing with like sun square moon, sun opposite moon, but those usually end in divorce, right? I talked about it in another short. You should should check out my TikToks or my YouTube shorts if you haven't. I've been putting them out, put out like 10 last week. But anyways, um, so 
a lot of people with this were denied freedom when they were younger, so they can't stand it when that happens to them as adults, right? They, always, they want that freedom, 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 freedom. Um, they can't be chained. So commitment can be a bit difficult in relationships, right? Um, and, you know, so, so it's just like, it's very sad. But um, I think that, like, when it comes to the big questions, you know, um, that is where it's difficult and where there can be kind of this back and forth um, and this, this uh, you know, this kind of search. And I've seen, yeah, so this one's kind of interesting, right? Because um, I've seen it where people kind of allow others to dictate their beliefs. Okay, I'm just going to believe this because you believe it. But then I've also seen it where they're just super rebellious, right? Um, so there is sort of a dual nature there and just a little in general. But um, yeah, so what else? I guess um, there can be a fear of, of having a view that kind of rocks the boat, you know? Obviously, like I said, always depends on the whole chart. If you have a Sag moon or, you know, like a just placements that, that, that indicate kind of, you know, a lot of Aquarius placements, it's going to be different than if you have a lot of Capricorn or Taurus placements. But, um, yeah, I would say, I would say that I've seen people with this when they get away from their families or from their, from their systems, you know, their conditioning systems, maybe even moving countries like Sagittarius, that's when a lot opens up for them. Um, so yeah, and then also, yeah, travel is huge for this, um, and, um, just experiencing life, right? But, like, it can bring one of the other shadows of Sag, which is over, like, taking too many risks, um, putting yourself out there too much, right? Um, overly inflated ego, or overly, you know, being overly attached to the, to, to, to their philosophies, like I said before, um, with the risks, kind of that, that what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, I can't think of it. But yeah, just the, the idea that, oh yeah, nothing can go wrong here, but it's actually like a massive risk, you know? Overly expansive, you could say. So, um, I would say, um, Hmm. I've seen Lil so Lilith in mutable signs. I've seen a good amount with bisexual or homosexual, um, Gemini, and Sag a lot more than but you know and Pisces and Virgo too. But really, yeah, Gemini and Sag. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you ask me like how can you tell if someone's you know. Uh, homosexual or bisexual by their chart. No, I can't. <laughs> and like a lot of people, in my opinion, are closeted or like they're not telling the truth about that area of life. I've just heard so many stories from women about, you know, my man was, you know, the straightest acting guy and he had sex with, like I'm having sex with like 50 dudes or something. I don't know. So yeah, um, I think that's probably good. Um, also, I would say like looking at the, the mercury is very important too, because, or just the chart in general when it comes to communication, because, um, you know, it can just be, if, if, it, if there's a lot of issues with communication, then yeah, it's going to be tough. It's going to be, it could, it could be, it could, it could lead to someone having those types of issues. Okay. What are we doing next? Taurus, Gemini, or Cancer? <laughs> we are doing Gemini. Okay. 19. Ooh, it's going to be a long video. Marathon. Okay, let's see Gemini. So the opposite sign. Um, so Black, Malilith, and Gemini. 
This one I have seen quite a bit actually, and I've noticed that people with this tend to, I mean, you have to watch out for self-sabotaging around lying. Now I say that, I can feel the people watching this being like, no, that's not me at all. Um, but really it, it comes around communication and miscommunications, right? Um, you know, that fear of, um, of saying that wrong thing at that wrong time. And, um, you know, just also I've seen it where it can manifest as like that person that just never stops talking. But this is, yeah. Um, yeah, so anyways, I think that um, also people with this, yeah, they love to learn and, um, but yeah, I, I think that there is, like, like, like what I've noticed is that, and I, whenever I tell people this, they always agree nearly. Like just that, that desire to play devil's advocate, right? Um, so they can unintentionally, how do I say it? It's like, so, so like, okay, let's say that they're in a room, they're talking to some people, and they don't disagree with the person who's talking, but they might just for whatever reason, right? Um, play devil's advocate. And then that might kind of just like be annoying to the other person, you know? Um, because in their head, they're like, why are you disagreeing with me? You know, like we we're on the same page, like let's move forward. But it's, it's kind of, it can be kind of like that argumentative, which I'm not saying is bad. And it's, and, and it's just all, everything is about extremes, right? So um, yeah. And there can be like a lack of care of how that message is, is perceived by others, right? Just kind of laying the opinion out, very blunt, kind of like the Sag. So, um, yeah, and I think because it's the twins, there is, yeah, that dual nature of Lilith and then that dual nature of, of, of Gemini can really come out. So there can be, like I said, <laughs> the most amazing communicator is someone that has issues with communicating in general. Um, and they can be so good at communicating that they can use that to kind of manipulate their way out of things or into things or whatever. Um, so yeah, this is like a very raw energy. So you have to be very careful what you say in a Mercury, you know, especially Gemini rule, you know, uh, Lilith, right? Um, so people with this sometimes can blurt out things or, you know, like, like be a little bit thoughtless with kind of how, like that they, they just have that need to share that urge, that need to, to share what's on their mind. <laughs> and sometimes it's not appropriate. So it's like, there is a need to kind of think. Um, and uh, also, you know, just like, are you dominating this conversation or not, right? Um, now, I think also there can be a feeling of rejection with this Lilith, like very misunderstood, um, you know, and like, maybe being disattached from emotions is very Gemini Lilith. And um, yeah, like it's, it's like they can be very hurt when they feel like, okay, why, the, why is this person not paying attention to me? Why are they not interested in my opinion? You know, or like, why are they, you know, why do they not want to talk to me? So um, yeah, um, I would say too that many people with displacements kind of were shamed early on for, for, um, for, you know, when they spoke their mind and when they expressed themselves. So there is that need to, you know, so sometimes there can be this um, overdoing it. And um, I think that it, my, in my experience, from what I've, when I've talked to people with this, it's like, they're very good at like seeing people's intentions, you know, like, um, yeah. And, uh, but like in a, in a lower, in a lower, in a lower energy, it's like someone who can be like involved in fraud or, you know, who can, who can be doing very immoral things. Like I said, if they, if they, if they can talk their way out of, out of things very easily or, in, you know, or, or be very salesy, you know, manipulative in that way. So, um, yeah, um, what else can I say? 
Oh yeah, because it, it, it can also manifest as like um, anxiety, like a very racing mind, like obsessive thoughts, just like um, difficult, difficulty like slowing that down. Um, and then also, yeah, like it could be lying to other people, tricking other people. Um, like I said, they, they're good at fooling people. So um, yeah, so I think that's, what else would I say? A good, a good way to, to work with that is to write and to find like a good, um, you know, a good way of getting that energy out. So, yeah. All right. Um, what's next? Next is Libra. Where are we at time wise? 55. 55. Okay. So, Libra. So Black Moon Lilith and Libra. Let's write down. Um, so this one is interesting. Uh, I would say it's a pretty challenging one because um, it's a very harmonious energy, but Lilith is not, <laughs> you know, not about that, right? Like I said, it's a, kind of it gives me a scorpionic feel. So break everything, you know. Um, I would say that these people are very fascinated by relationships, but then it, it can be an area that's, you know, where they might lack success. Um, and they can tend to have like a very bad, more toxic, um, way they fall for people, you know, like maybe like very unavailable people, people that treat them badly. Um, and yeah, so it's like this, there can be this codependent energy, right? Like this, this hunger for love, like nothing is ever enough. Um, you know, basing how I'm doing in life um, on, you know, how much love I'm receiving romantically. So you can imagine if that's the case that someone you know would be willing to kind of like we see with a lot of Libra placements let themselves go you know put someone else above them if even if they're not doing good for the balance to to be there you know put um you know people please and 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 not have their own needs met just to to make sure the other person's needs are met so a lot of times with this, because it's Libra, it's that polarity, they, they can see their shadow selves mirrored by others, right? Um, so, yeah. Besides that, um, I would say that there is, if you go further on that, in, in, within that, it's about self-worth, right? Insecurities around self-worth and being too, you know, caring too much about what other people think. Um, there can be, like I said, that people pleasing, that desire to appeal to other people, um, and just being very sensitive to other people's opinions of you and allowing those to sort of shape your opinion of yourself. Like I said, this is only a potential. Um, so it's really important to choose your lovers and choose your friends carefully when you have this, right? Um, like you really need to make sure that you know you, you avoid these energy vampires and you really work on whether it's having a friend who tells you how tells you how tells you it how it is or whether it's um, a skill you develop and based on your nail chart maybe you have this right but just the need to um, have that now hold on okay so um, yeah, I would say that there can definitely be some commitment issues here. Um, and like, like um, in the sense that, so like in some people with this, I've noticed that they can, they can think that there's always something better. Um, but yeah, a lot of times there is just getting stuck in these really toxic relationships. And, but like when I say commitment issues, it's also just that, indecisiveness of Libra, right? So, um, 
yeah, so it can, like I've seen this manifest in overeating, um, you know, just like, like stuff like that where they, like it comes from that core of feeling unlovable and unlovable and, and, and that need to be accepted and appreciated. So yeah, self-love is, is the big one there. Um, and I'm gonna have to figure something out with my microphone because my computer's dying. I only have two ports. I'm gonna pause this real quick. All right, I'm back. I solved the issue somehow. <clears throat> Let's hope that it stays that way. All right, so now Aquarius. So last of the air signs. Um, well, that's actually one I've seen a good amount as well. Um, so yeah, Black and Lilith and Aqua, they live for freedom, right? Um, and kind of like Sag, you know, they hate that restriction, you know, any type of restriction. But I think that the issue can come um, when, it, you know, when it's between finding that balance, right, between... Um, kind of how they're, the, you know, the people around them, like the expectations that other people, you know, have of them and their own views. Um, so they can feel very detached from the world, right? Like they can feel like very, very, like a lot of Aquarius energy can, like very like, uh, like I don't relate to this, right? But like at the same time, like Aquarius, there is that craving to belong, 11th house, right? Um, but it's like almost like, yeah, so, so they can really, so, so it's like the shadow of self can be this kind of cold energy of like this, this aloof energy, right? Um, of like, oh yeah, well, I'm just not gonna mess with you. Peace. You know? Um, so I would say that, um, that yeah that, that 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 it can be like and it's not a bad thing just the need to keep that individualism the authentic self-expression right at any cost right um but this can you know that that obsession for freedom and look i have venus and mars and aquarius like I, I get it but like that you know that obsession for freedom it can make relationships hard you know like how you know how how to how to compromise um Air energy is impossible to tie down, right? So, um, you know, it's like, it's like, it can be difficult for relationships, especially modern relationships. It's like how, like, you know, that are defined in these ways, like, you know, staying in the same bed, always doing everything together. That might not work for this black and blue placement. Um, so a lot of people with this, they just don't know how to establish intimate relationships or how to be, you know, vulnerable or close and to, you know, express emotions of, you know, warm emotions. I don't know. Um, but like, yeah, so it can, it can feel a, 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 like, like their inner self, their, not their soul, but like, you know, this very deep part of them is like locked from others. You know what I mean? And not really feeling attachment to others. And it can, it's, so it reminds you of like a very avoidant attachment, right? Um, as ch you know, a lot, of, a lot of them have that as children, or you know, have that. So, um, you know, I think that when they were young, a lot of them learned that trusting other people was just a recipe for getting hurt. Um, they could have had lots of betrayals, even, even by friends could be family, could, you know, I've, I've seen it um, with adopted people or people who really like had like crazy upbringings in the, in the sense, not judging them, but like, you know, just upbringings that were very abnormal. But um, yeah, they, I mean, it still gives that, that, that Aquarian, you know, just spark, you know, where they're just so interested and, um, you know, they, 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 they go towards the unusual and they want to escape that every day, Ugh, you know? But yeah, there can also be a lot of risk taking, right? With some of these, like some of these other placements I've talked about. Um, so I've seen with this one, people finding, I can actually think of someone exactly like who, you know, 
it's almost like through sex they find their freedom and it's like a way I, 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 I can think of several people who you know lots of one night stands right um and it's almost like they found freedom, right? Or the, like they, 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 like they found freedom in like whether it, you know it's not really the the alcohol or or the, or the partying could be a little bit, but it's more so they make up for that lack of vulnerability, um, you know, in these types of ways, right? And it's also kind of rebellious. So. I'd say with Aquarius, Black and Lilith, also there can be a tendency to be overly rebellious. And then it's like, are you rebelling for the sake of, re just for the sake of rebelling and being different, or are you actually believing what you're doing? So, um, yeah, I think that it's t it can be tough. Obviously, with every placement I'm talking about, it's really um, about the entire chart, how it works with it. But um, it makes it really interesting too, right? Like how much different this would be for a very, you know, crazy chart like, like mine, <laughs> uh, Sag, Moon, Pisces, Sun, um, Aquarius, Venus, and Mars compared to some of the more conservative chart like a Capricorn, Sun, Cancer, Moon, Taurus, Rising, Vir Virgo, Mars, I don't know. So, um, yeah, uh, I would say that, what else, what else, what else? Yeah, so it's like how to how can you express this is kind of like the question for a lot of Aquarius questions. How can you express that eccentric personality, right? Like that eccentric you without, you know, um doing it in, in a way where it's just too much, right? Um and a lot of people with this can have like a I don't give a shit attitude, but like really within they are afraid of kind of being judged when they, you know show their authentic self, because they, they, maybe there, like I said, there could be issues of abandonment and whatnot. So, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. All right, what are we doing now? I think now, thanks for bearing with me in these videos, I have to write the timestamps. It's not, it's not easy, guys. No, it's not that bad. Um, we're gonna do cancer. So, okay, so we'll do water now and then earth. So, okay, black and Lilith and cancer. All right, so, well, when we talk about water element with black and Lilith, I mean, it's, it's obviously, you know, you think emotions, right? You think, okay, well, um, if black and Lilith is, you know, what we say it is, cancer, what does cancer do? It hides. <laughs> Uh, it, it's the crab that crawls back in the shell once it's been hurt. Um, so I would say that, you know, with Cancer, Black, and Lilith, there can be um, this feeling of being extremely vulnerable emotionally, very sensitive, but then feeling like you lack that nurturing as a child. And it can be very hard and this would be similar with the Capricorn, to ask for help, right? You know, and, and that desire to not be a burden on other people and to, to not be seen as weak, right? Especially in a, in a male chart. Um, but yeah, it can feel very, like, insecure, anxious. There can be emotional you know, de depression. Just very, it can feel very, like I said, stuck in its shell. So, um, you know, cancer is also about the family. So... This can also bring some some dif difficult energy, and you know, in, in the childhood, so there can be some difficult energy um, around here. Like uh, there, I've seen people this who are very strongly tied to their family, where it's like, like they can even like, there, it can be some issues with like leaving the nest, you know. Like maybe they're too coddled, but yeah, it could also be like dark energy with the family. Um, and uh, yeah, so like I said, I always say with Lilith, they can be either overcompensated or repressed, right? So it's like, how do you find the balance? So Lilith and water signs is very, it can be very subtle, right? And it can be very beneath the surface and indirect and very mysterious, but also very powerful because it can, you know, very, like, you know, really, really um, 
run the show in a way, right? Not saying it's stronger than the moon, but you get what I'm saying. So yeah, I would say whew, Lilith and Cancer. Okay, like lacking security as a child is big. Um, having lacked that, um, even like trauma in in early on, I've seen that. Um, yeah, just like not having your needs fulfilled growing up, right? Is 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 common. Um, just like someone with a cancer moon that's hard aspected. It's like, you know, you, you had these, these, this deep sensitivity, but there, the needs were not meant. So yeah, like needing nurturing and, and not having received in the right way. And, um, yeah, like, um, I think that it can make someone like on the root chakra level, you know, when you think of like, like I was doing a meditation today, actually, kind of going like like scanning the chakras, root chakra. It's like you know, is the world a safe place? You know, do you feel like you can leave your house and and go through the world and um, you know feel comfortable in your skin? Like a lot of times with this, it doesn't feel like that, right? Um, yeah. So because like cancer is all about safety. It's all about being nurtured and nurturing. So. You know, it can, like I said, the dual nature of Lilith, it can either be like someone who um, is obsessed or overcompensating in that, and you know, with everything related to nurturing. It could be, you know, so it could be the parent who's like overly coddling or the, the child who's, who had that, that like I said, that overly, overly coddling experience, or someone who just completely rejects the idea of nurturing, just completely disconnected, right? So... Yeah, I would say a lot of times people with this, there's frustrations around home, you know, things with mom and dad not being the best. And people with this may have felt an urge to, you know, get out of their homes from an early age at times. There can be like a lot of, you know, issues, like power struggles and issues with the family. Um, and yeah. Um, Trying to think what else. I don't like to do like the mother father thing. I mean, you could say like, you know, like Lilith and cancer. It's like, yeah, the mother didn't, you know, give it, you know, was an issue and maybe. But I would say, um, especially in a male chart, there can be a rejection of the feminine energy. But either way, like, you know, fe feminine as well. Um, and like one of the big lessons is like, how can I be emotionally stable? How can I, how can I nurture myself, right? Kind of like a cancer north node in that sense. And, um, yeah, so it's like if you can't support your emotional needs yourself, um, how are you going to you know, give it to someone else in a relationship, right? But I think uh, a lot of times, you know, like I, like I said, I don't like to do the mother-father thing, but I have, you know, I would, I, I would like to throw in, like, when, when we talk about cancer Capricorn, like family karma, like the cancer could be, like, you know, family karma from the mother's side, um, ancestors, all that. Um, maybe like woman suffering in like a transgenerational trauma type manner. So, so yeah. So now we're at the big one. Ha ha ha. Well, they're all big, but Lilith in Scorpio. That's where I have mine. Um, let's go back. So yeah, so Lilith and Scorpio is, I mean, you could say it's probably like the natural, I mean, yeah, it's not, it's the natural home of Lilith. Um, where do I start? <sighs> um, I mean, everything, you know, the, the, like the Lilith and Scorpio, you know, it's special because it's like, it's very similar to Lilith's energy, right? Like the core themes of, of Scorpio. So um, if you, if you want to think about that, what is it? It's, you know, it can be crisis, um, trauma, pain, right? Having to deal with your unconscious shadow, et cetera. So... It's like that very transformative energy. But what I've noticed with Lilith Scorpio is that like, you know, cause it's also, it's Pluto rule, but it's also Mars, right? So like, you know, so it's like, I've noticed not just in me, 
But like, it can make, and it obviously it depends on the house placement, you know, that's the aspects, like I have mine on the IC with Pluto. But like, it can make people get real, like when they're in their lower vibes, like, it's like they can be the sweetest people, but they know, and maybe this, yeah, this especially with Scorpio, like they know exactly what to say to just like absolutely obliterate someone. This goes with a lot of Scorpio placements too. Um, and a lot of water placements in general. Um, especially like if someone holds their anger in, but little Scorpio is very, very smart psychologically. Um, they like nothing gets past this placement, right? There's almost like, um, and, and, and you know, you bring up the idea in Scorpio of power, right? Do you find the power within or without? If you find the power within, you know, that's good. If, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're looking for it externally, that's not good, right? You're going to try to dominate other people, etc. cetera. But um, I would say with this one, it's like there's, there's a lot around control, right? That, that desire, like I need to be in control of my own life, which is linked with power, right? Um, and it can also create somewhat of a, a big ego uh, in, in a way, right? I'll get into that in a sec. But yeah, I think like... Um, what it does is that, you know, in this world, especially like in the spiritual world, we tend to like want to push away some of these like negative emotions, like jealousy, um, you know, being, wanting revenge, vindictiveness, right? Um, what else? Uh, yeah, just manipulation. I guess that's not emotion, but rage, whatever. And they're, they're, you know, you, we, we try to repress them, right? Um, so with this, like those energies can come out, especially in times of stress. And it's really about like having the awareness of them, right? So there can be like a lot of tension in the mind of the little Scorpio native, but like the world might not see it. They, they're very good at hiding it. So, um, you know, I think with this one, there is that, that, that it does force someone to kind of face their shadow, right? Um, you know, the more someone tries to run from their problems, the more it kind of hits them in the head at some point, right? It's very, very, lots of fate, right? So um, I think that there's a big fear of being help, um, helpless. And, um, you know, when I talk about ego, it's more like, for example, working for someone, right? Or, you know. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back. So my... Space on my computer died when I was in the middle of my best part of the video. Um, God, that sucks. Well, hopefully I can get back to the heights I reached there. Um, also, I don't really know exactly what I said and what I didn't say. But yeah, so with Lilith and Scorpio, I guess, um, you know, there is a lot around, you know, I talked about that fear of, um, you know, there, there can be a lot of fear of facing the own shadows, of fo facing the shadows, right? Um, and just like how someone with this can feel a lot of fear from that very primal raw energy that they have, especially like psychological, but they can become very aware of it. So like they're very psychologically intelligent and, um, you know, what can happen, like the dark side of it, right, is that, um, you know, in relationships, for example, they can be very domineering, but they can also have relationships where, um, you know, it's like just very toxic on both sides, right? But like, they can have relationships where they're just like, so not willing to let go. Um, and just like knowing that like, you know, change doesn't mean bad right? Change is necessary, like with Taurus, right? That was, I think it's, I, I don't know what was recorded, right? I could have gone back and watched, I watched the last minute, but it's like, I don't know. But, um, and it's funny, every video lately, every long video, I mean, videos are so long, these are like courses, but like, um, yeah, it's like something happens where I have to just tell my editor, like, hey, it's two videos, but I have timestamps. But anyways, um, yeah, so Scorpio, Black, and Lilith are so good at manipulation. Holy sh blah. And, um, and And it's just like, just because you have that power doesn't mean you should use it. Um, so, like, I think ethically, like, 
in terms of a relationship, because there is that that real obsessive energy, right? Um, and it can be very love and hate and love and hate and the relationships. Yeah, can teach them, can help them transform a lot. But a lot, but it's like, are you willing to look at yourself, right? Or are you just going to push the blame to someone else? That's a big theme. I've seen a lot of the pride there, the ego there. Um, no, it's not me, you know. And then they can kind of like. Um, okay, I can think of one person. I'm happy this came to me. It was a um, very toxic person that one of my clients knew who had like a lot like of, I don't remember the placements. I just remember the qualitative like idea around it. He had Black Moon Lilith in Scorpio and this guy could talk, <laughs> you know, it's like maybe, I don't know, some strong Mercury, Gemini. I think he had Gemini or Gemini Moon or something, but I can't remember. Either way, like just, I'm not going to get into the details, but the way this guy spun lies together and he was like a major talent, you know, but eventually she knew she, you know, she realized what was happening and it took a lot of, um, you know, power for her to kind of release, you know, to, to kind of like make sure that he wasn't a part of her life. But yeah, I mean, it can be a very, like I was, so I was saying the part that didn't get filmed, like this is a very sexy placement. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm speaking more from the feminine side, um, female and woman side. So I don't know about male, but like, let me tell you, I mean, I have this, but I'm not talking about myself here. It's like, I, I, I kick out myself when I do these types of, of, of um, videos. But like, I mean, <clears throat> sex is just super important. And sometimes, and it's kind of like this with Scorpio in general. I'm not gonna say Scorpio is the best sign for sex, but like it's a different type of sex than you're gonna experience with anyone else. No, uh, I don't wanna make any self-limiting beliefs. Not all Scorpios are amazing at sex, I don't think. But like this placement of Lilith, they can have like very like unique sexual minds, right? And very taboo outside of the ordinary. They can kind of make their partners believe like, so they can be very manipulative. Like they can hold on to their partners through sex. Like, oh, no one's gonna, you know, no one's gonna give you this. You're never gonna be able to feel this to someone else, you know? So it's stuff like that, right? Um, so it's that manipulation and they can be very, very sexy. Like, let's be real, right? So I, I already said that like four times, but, um, it can be kind of like very like like just like I was saying like that toxic energy in relationships where you're just like afraid to let the person go so they just stay together they just keep having the same fight over and over and over, but like there's that seductive energy and like because sex is so important to people with this um, and yeah the duality of, of Lilith is that there, you know you either you know go full on or you just reject sex but still. And I have seen, actually, I have to say, on a few occasions, people who have completely like rejected sex, like seen it as like something that's like they their idea of it, like they have like a very negative connotation with it, right? But um, yeah, like I don't even know. Like I, like I said in the part that, that didn't get recorded, like what do you think of when you think of Scorpio and S Scorpio and kinky and sex? Those three words. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, and I, I think I said in the part that didn't get recorded, like. When I, you know, I have, a lot of my clients are are women, um, so like I'm very like I have very strong boundaries around talking about these types of things. Like I'm never gonna like bring it up. Like I'll say it, but I'll, I'll look away. Like when if I'm doing a live reading or something, um, or if we're like talking live in a follow up, like it's really just like if you want to tell me stuff, and I will delete you from my mind. You know, like I yeah, but like the data I keep. That's been a skill. So another skill for astrologers, I guess. Yeah, keep the data. I don't know, but anyways, um, what else can I say? What else did I say? Um, yeah, I think uh, spirituality, kind of like the more undercover parts of life, are very, very powerful. Oh yeah, did I talk about trust issues? Um, and just like how people with this are um, 
you know, like this, like Black Moon Lilith and Scorpio can be very linked to trust issues and maybe having been betrayed at some point in their life. And a lot of times they can find it very hard to, um, to trust, right? So, yeah. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something I said. I was so bad when that happens. Like, I was on, I was, like, I swear it was the best five minutes of my video or five or ten minutes of my video when it got cut. And it still feels good, but I swear I'm forgetting something. Um, I just don't know what I said or didn't say. Either way, like, just control your powers, transform yourself, um, you know, understand that with great powers comes great responsibility and that you shouldn't, you know, be doing lame things like trying to control other people. What's happening over here? Okay. Anyways. Um, we are at, okay. Well, maybe I did do a good job. So Pisces. Um, Pisces, Black Moon, Lilith is another water one. And this is an interesting one. Um, what I would say about Black Moon, Lilith and Pisces is similar to what I would say with a lot of, um, you know, if you, an easy way to look at Black Moon, Lilith from one perspective is just like, okay, what is the shadow, right? What's the low energy? I know I'm on my phone. Um, what's the low energy, right? So Black Moon Lilith and Pisces are infamous for um, living in a dream world, feeling like they're not made for this world. Um, escapism, whether it's drugs, alcohol, whatever, whatever, right? Um, so yes, because Lilith does work in extremes, they can be extremely spiritual and uh, all that, but, um, you know, they can also be very, very impractical. Um, and just like any Virgo Pisces placement, it can be that, um, it can be that big gap between the spiritual and the practical realms. Now, um, I think also with, with um, Black Moon Lilith and Pisces as well, there can be a fear of being vulnerable, right? Like, uh, you know, that fear that can lead to putting up emotional walls, right? Um, and so sensitive that kind of like cancer, right? Where it's like the crab crawling back in the shell, but it's like just like isolating themselves. You know, I'm so sensitive when I put myself out there and I've been hurt, why would I, why would I allow that again? And just avoidant, you know, avoidant tendencies. So, um, and they might not be aware of it. So, and it can also be, this one can, I've seen so much self-sabotage around self-esteem with this one because Black Moon and Pisces can really lack that feeling of like, um, of, self, of, of, of like having a strong self-esteem. You know what I mean? So, um, on one end, you know, they can trust way too fast, right? Very Piscean. And um, that could then lead to bad situations that then reinforces that idea that they need to protect themselves and lock themselves away, right? So what they need to do is rely on their intuition, right? And rely on their gut feeling and, and get with people who are not energy vampires um, and accept, right? Like, all of us have to accept that, especially the water, black, and lilies, that pain is part of the game, you know? Like, like, you know, to put yourself out there, you know, shit happens. Um, you know, and, and a lot of people, black and lilith and Pisces can just, like, I've seen so many drug addicts have this, you know? I'm just going to keep it a buck. And people, but like, more than drug addicts, I've seen people who... 
I feel like this whole video can be applied so much to the signs. I should do like a new intro because it's like, yes, it's black and little, but like I'm speaking like a lot about the energy of the signs. But um, just delusional. Like Pisces can be so delusional and think like, oh yeah, like things are just going to work out. You know, I don't have to work hard. The universe got me. That's not how it fucking works. I, would, I, sh I probably said that in my North Node video. That was like an hour long, and this one's gonna be, jeez. Okay. But um, yeah, so I think um, escapism can come in many forms, whether it's drugs, alcohol, sex, but also, you know, you can name different, like I, you, some would say like shopping, eating, um, you know, but also like daydreaming and not, not facing reality, right? That's escapism. So, um, but yeah, like I said, there, there is a good side to it. It's of extreme spirituality, like, like creativity, imagination, sensitivities, right? Um, but they can be very, you know, they have to watch out for, um, like, they can be tricked by other people, right? They can be a little bit gullible when young especially. So they have to watch out for, for who they associate with a lot. Um, and yeah, because it rules extremes, uh, they can also reject everything related to spirituality. They can, you know, and, and, and be the types of people that, you know, are so logical. And, you know, if it's, if it's not no, you know, observable, you know, doesn't, doesn't exist. So, um, but yeah, I've seen here, I think my, doesn't my dad have this? I think so, yeah, he has his little image of my son. Amazing, right? Um, so they, they always, with this, they're always very introspective people, right? And they have like a natural fascination for, for these types of like, um, you know, psych, psychology, spirituality, like what's beyond, you know, God, you could call it the universe. But yeah, they can oftentimes like, with their life experiences, shut that down or, or find a lot of shame in wanting to even talk about these subjects or like there's like some weird fear around that, right? Um, so, yeah. Um, and I think also what can happen with this is that people can have like a lack of awareness around their emotions, especially like negative ones, right? Speaking of escapism. So, yeah, like with these types of placements or this placement, but like, you know, just a lot of just Pisces in general, like psychotherapy is those wonders, you know, or just making the unconscious conscious, right? Um, and having, a, you know, um, a, play, um, a creative outlet. But regardless, people with this have very strong intuitions, especially if they have, you know, other nice intuitive placements in their chart, like, you know, water energy or, you know, water houses or whatever, Neptune doing good things, but, um, you know, there can be that, that trick of like anxiety, tricking anxiety or worrying or something like that for intuition or imagination, you know, for intuition. So I think people with this should avoid, should try to balance themselves out in the best way possible. Um, and also just, yeah, make sure not to put, put trust in the wrong people and, but yeah, you live and you learn, you know, so just don't, don't give up, right? Because it's like, um, there's that very high empathy and people sometimes can, with this can get, in Pisces in general, can, like, you know, when, when they get hurt or people kind of mess with them, then, you know, they, they shut down. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, just not giving, not giving away all your power, right? That's important. Okay, where are we? Okay. So Taurus. All right, Taurus, 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 Taurus. All right, so we're on the last part. Over an hour. Um, so Black One, Lilith, and Taurus, right? Usually it's the second one we do, but I like to do it in a different order. Mix it up. It's not fair for Pisces to always be last and Aries always be first, even though Aries was first in this video. 
But Black Lilith and Taurus, to me, is pretty, I see it a good amount too. Um, it can be very self-indulgent and it can be very afraid to take risks. Um, and um, they can even be hedonistic. You know, um, they can be too rational, right? Like just like, and too afraid, yeah, like too afraid to take risks like, uh, like that Taurus energy, you know, like, like just like very stubborn. Um, and, you know, they can, they can, what else? Um, you know, like because Taurus does rule, you know, safety, they can, you know, um, lack that feeling of safety in the world. Um, security is a better word for it. So they're motivated by that, right? And they can, you know, the projection or the way it can, it can unfold is that they can go too far in trying to, um, to find that, right? So they can, you know, I've seen people with this, you know, when, be very, very afraid of poverty and have like an obsession for material possessions, for money, um, you know. So, um, and it can come from trying to, you know, fill this void, right? Um, so what can happen, I've seen with some people with this is like they can judge other people instead of, of how they are as a human, how they are with their, you know, are they rich or, you know, what's their status, stuff like that. But really it's like a judgment of themselves, right? So it's, it's about, you know, focusing on yourself, focusing on your own values, on your own, you know, on, on kind of who you are, right? Um, so... Yeah, um, a very feminine one. I think it's also can be very, like, kind of attractive and seductive. Um, but yeah, I think that um, sometimes they can kind of repress some of their feminine ways. Um, and. Um, yeah, like I, I think like just the idea of tying their self-esteem so much to what they make and what they have and who they are, you know, that's that's the, probably one of the bigger ones I've seen. And um, it comes from, yeah, feeling like when you were young, if something happened where you felt like it wasn't okay to be yourself, right? Um, it wasn't okay to, you know, Venus, like to see the beauty in the world, to, 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 to be happy, to, to express joy. And yeah, so um, I think that, um, I think that, yeah, money's always a big one with this one, nearly always. So a lot of times I've seen people with this, they've come from very little money. I've noticed, but, and they've been like, like, I know one girl with this and she is from very little money and she works like her, she's just so hardworking and obsessed. Like she's told me like her most, like the most, and this is someone who understands spirituality. And she said like the most important thing to her is to have money. You know, like that's what she cares about most in the world. And obviously, you know, with that money, helping animals and stuff like that, but like really just like, I thought it was kind of like a joke at, not a joke, I thought it was just something she was saying at first, but like, you know, when you said it multiple times, it's like, okay, like she's really about that, you know? Um, so, yeah, I've seen, like, I've gotten the, the sense that there's some generational, you know, kind of karmic energy around that. Um, and guys, I've just kind of like in the past few months really moved into Lilith because I've seen it just show up so strongly, by the way. Like I wasn't like as into it as I am now before. I mean, I always was talking about it, but that's why you explore, you know. But anyways, um, yeah, so it, it I got so many examples in my head of this one. Um, I think... Um, like just no, learning, like the key is learning that, like I said before, that, you know, that you can rely on yourself, that you don't need, that things are going to be okay, to trust the universe, to trust change, to trust, you know, spiritual change. Um, 
But, you know, I, I've also seen how, um, like, the hedonistic side, right, like the senses, like sex obsessed, right, potentially, um, you know, eating, binge eating, drinking, right, um, you know, like, uh, I, I've seen people who, with this, gain weight as a way to protect themselves from being hurt by others. I've literally seen that. It's very sad. Um, you know, like they had a relationship, got burnt, heartbroken, and then just their coping mechanism, eating food. It's nothing to laugh about. It's very sad. Um, I've seen with this one a, a lot of attraction to the opposite sex. Not that everyone with this one is heterosexual, but like just how sex can be an intimacy, closeness, right? can be so important. Um, and I've seen a lot of them be very promiscuous. I'm just going to be honest. Um, I don't judge that. And yeah. So um, next, so we got two more. We got Virgo. Hold on. Okay, so with Virgo, Black Moon, Lilith, what do you think I'm going to say? Um, well, Virgo is obviously purity, um, and it is very hard on itself, and it can be very overly logical. So, um, you know, but it's also a very sensitive and misunderstood energy, right? But um, I th I've seen people with this be, you know, like intellectualized life too much and have very high expectations for themselves and others. Um, and not just others, but also the world, right? And especially when it comes to relationships, just like no one ever being good enough, right? And you see this with a lot of Virgo placements too. Um, but like, you know, also for them, it, it's the projection is always in the self with Virgo, right? So it's like, like a lot of times people with this that come from like a, you know, household where perfectionism was pushed on them in some way, I'm not gonna get into all the ways, but just wanting to be perfect um, in the eyes of other people, right? Um, and, and, and living up to other people's expectations, whether it's parents or, or societal, societal, whatever. So, um, yeah, I would say that a lot of people with this had very strict, strict parents that kind of kept them in a very rigid kind of box and if they didn't do things the way they're supposed to it wasn't good right so um i think that because virgo is so much about order and lilith is so much about chaos um this can be a tough one right um and you know here you can have someone who um you know who is very very you know faced to kind of look at how you know, how controlling they can be or how, how, how perfectionist they can be um, in this. Yeah. So letting go is for, for like most of these is kind of like the key. But um, like, you know, like Virgo is very much about routines and Lilith doesn't, can't, you know, is very like F those, you know. So um, I think that I've seen people with this, you know, being very misunderstood growing up, like, you know, having been bullied. Um, and, you know, just, um, just being very, very, very harsh on themselves, right? Judging themselves so, like, underestimating and not having faith in their abilities, right? Um, and I like with so many verbal placements, right? It's like like they come from a family where it's like they only like they only got love or they only were accepted if they like got good grades or did good in sports or this or that, right? Conformed. So, you know, if you think about conforming, Lilith is very anti-conformist. So, um, you know, it can be this this one can be very like lead to like a lot of anxiety, like overthinking, like I said. Um, so there's a need to let go and to play. There's a need, you know. 
Um, and, um, you know, it can also be like a very overly rational, right? Um, especially the family. Very like um, rejecting everything related to spirituality that, you know, that, that can't be seen by, you know, that can't be proven is all bullshit. Like very, sci you know, lo like logical, um, scientific. So um, it, can be, it can be a tough one. I really think this one is a very tough one. Um, and there's that, that desire, right? It's like want to be the best at everything you do. Um, and I think, um, like, yeah, just like in relationships, that critical nature, right? Like if it's not healed can come out where it's like, you're just noticing the flaws of, of people, right? Like, so someone can do 99 things amazing, and then that one thing that they do badly, like they're an amazing person, they do this bad, or they do this good, they, they, they're, they're loyal to you, the sex is amazing, you guys have a great relationship, similar goals and values, and you, you can talk and all that, but maybe they don't do the dishes sometimes, or I don't know. That's maybe an extreme example. But you know what I mean? So um, just noticing the flaws and speaking on the thaws, speaking because it is Mercury ruled, on the flaws, hey Mika, um, instead of um, speaking of the good things and then maybe mixing in the flaws, right? So yeah. But like also sometimes they, they might notice notice these things, but um, keep them, you know, keep those thoughts to them themselves, right? And it just kind of bubbles in. Now also because, you know, Virgo is the virgin, there can be issues of sexuality here, right? Like a repression, like feelings of, 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 you know, shame around it, maybe, you know, traumatic experiences here. I've, you know, like I said, it's tough to talk about sexuality with clients. Hey, Mika, come here. But just my experience with this one is that, yeah, sometimes like it can definitely create someone who, um, like you just, you, you just don't know. Like it's just something they never talk about. Um, here's Mika. Yeah, so because of the overthinking nature um, and, and the potential to get stuck in your own head, like, yeah, there is a tendency for anxiety, for depression, all that. So... Mika, no, this is the one shirt I have that has no cat fur on it. We're gonna keep it that way. It actually has a little. And you were very bad. You got grounded four times last night for trying to bite wires. Literally. This cat's crazy. Uranus conjunct sun. So um, I would say, yeah, with, Vir with Virgo, there's like that fear of failure, right? Um, and like, yeah, they just, like I said, um, being very hard on people, criticizing them, and, you know, even making them feel, other people feel, you know, not enough, flawed. Mika, not right now. You can say hi, though. But, yeah, really, it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like with Virgo energy, you know. Um, hey, baby Mika. Sun, her Venus conjunct my sun. It's like, yeah, with Virgo energy, um, you know, it's all a projection. Like when, some, when, when, like when someone who has a lot of that energy in their chart, when they do inner work and they start to get over per perfectionism, then they don't project it outwardly, right? So um, there's a lot of work to kind of um, compensate with respect to the feelings of not being enough, right? And with that, trying to you know, prove to the world that they are good, right? That they're not as flawed and bad as they think they are. So, um, I've cat for all over. So yeah, um, for, like self-forgiveness, I would say is a big one there. Um, and also sometimes forgiving others, like whether it's family and, you know, or whatever, and just being able to, yeah, to cut yourself, cut yourself some slack and, 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 and understand that no one is perfect. And a lot of, yeah, like Virgo can be really interesting that way. Okay. Last one. Capricorn, a long video. 
We'll do 32. Okay, so Capricorn. Um, Capricorn, Black Moon, Lilith. So, um, I would say, I mean, it's the same. I, I kind of like not saying something at the start because it's like, use your imagination. If, so, if, if you're someone who's watching this whole video, which I, please leave a comment if you are. I appreciate you a lot. You are amazing. Although I totally understand someone just watching for their sign or a few. Oh my God, this cat here. No. But um, yeah, so Capricorn, um, Black Moon Lilith, what could it be? Well, Capricorn can be very, very, I have to be number one, you know? Um, but also, I, you know, what, what, what I would say about Capricorn Black Moon Lilith is that there can be a fear um, of not being recognized, right? Um, and, you know, but like what can happen is that they can try to control situations um, as a means to feel that power, right? Um, and to feel acknowledged and whatnot, right? So, but like what happens is the more that they try to dominate and control, the more 